Um, thank you very much for joining our webinar this evening, uh, where we'll be covering knee replacement surgery. My name's Phil. I'll be your host for this session. And our expert speaker this evening is our consultant orthopedic surgeon, Mr. Mark Jones. Just to give you an overview of how the format of the session, um, Mr. Jones's presentation will run approximately 40 minutes, and this will be followed by a Q&A session. And you can submit questions for the Q&A session at any time during the presentation or following the presentation. And you can do this by using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. And I should point out that you can do this anonymously or you can give your name. And I should mention that if you do give your name, we are recording this session. If you would like to book your consultation, we'll be providing contact details at the end of the session. That's quite enough from me for the time being. So without further ado, I will hand over to our expert speaker, Mr. Mark Jones. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for attending this evening's webinar. Um, so I'll get on with my presentation. So my name is Mark Jones. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon here at the Benedon Hospital. And the session today is going to talk a bit about what to expect from a painful knee and knee arthritis, going through the management treatment options of this, and, and mainly focusing on knee replacement surgery and, and how this will affect you as a patient, and going through anything that you you have any queries about at the end with any questions. So, as I said, I'm a, one of the consultant surgeons here, specialising in knee surgery. Um, I train. I was an Imperial College School of Medicine where I did, undertook my undergraduate training, where I, and my surgical training occurred here in Kent, Surrey, and Sussex region. Before I went over to Brisbane, Australia, to do my specialist uh, subspecialist training in knee surgery, particularly sports medicine and knee replacement surgery. I now have a consultant post in East Kent Hospitals as a consultant there, uh, where I do my trauma in Margate and my elective work in Canterbury, subspecialising in knee surgery and sports knee injuries. To talk about the Benedon Hospital, we're, we're currently a leading provider of private hip and knee treatments in Kent and Sussex. And we provide an environment that is clean and calm and hopefully will uh, suit your needs if you required any surgery here. We have consultant orthopaedic surgeons who will see you in clinic and operate on you and physiotherapists who will see you pre-operatively and post-operatively for your, your management for, for your knee conditions. We've had very good outcomes in patient satisfaction rates on both the private websites and other uh, app applications which rate our performance. And we have a, a rapid recovery program with most of our patients who have knee replacement staying in for a maximum of uh, three days usually. These are the group of orthopaedic surgeons who perform knee replacement surgery. Um, as you can see, all of us uh, work here and have, have numbers which we, we do on a regular basis. Our current numbers for last year, for these is just including our private patients. Uh, the Benedon did 225 private knee replacements last year, which is one of the highest in the region, only second to the Horder Centre. Um, this doesn't take into account all the NHS patients we also do, so this number is higher, it's just not included in this total. So what is arthritis and how does it affect you? Well, Knee arthritis starts as a condition early on where you start developing some stiffness in the knee. You may start getting more pain in your knee, depending on the activities you're doing, the more impact work that you're doing. And you may start noticing your knee clicks or grinds or scrapes and feels a bit rougher than it used to do. And it can swell up when it does this. And you may notice that the swelling causes even more stiffness within the knee. The late symptoms of um, arthritis are that you get pain at rest. You sit down and the pain doesn't go away. You, you, you can't sleep at nighttime because of the pain or it wakes you from sleep. 
and you start getting a bit of a deformity in the knee and this is because you wear out more of your cartilage and your more become your knee becomes more angulated because of the the arthritis which it subsequently worsens your pain and, and symptoms and because of all of this you start walking smaller distances to try and offload this knee because of the pain and if you look at these x-rays here you can see on the left hand side is a, an x-ray of a normal knee and you can see the gap between the two ends of the bone indicating there's a nice area of cartilage and meniscus sitting in that gap which act, which adds shock absorption and protection to the knee on the right hand side you can see that because the cartilage has worn out you have bone on bone arthritis and this is end stage arthritis requiring treatment if the symptoms are bad enough so how do we treat knee arthritis well it really goes down two pathways the first pathway is the non-surgical pathway um, and this includes activity modification avoiding those high impact activities which you do which flare your knee up or cause more pain this can be a problem sometimes people don't are still having to work and still have to go up and down ladders etc and this can be a problem to act to modify these activities but it's about trying to do activities which are protective for the knee these include cycling swimming and those activities that are non-impact weight loss has a huge part in uh, treatment options for knee arthritis. The knee takes a huge load through it on every step that you take. One of the examples is as you go up and down stairs, the knee actually loads about five to ten times your body weight. So even small amounts of weight loss will have a huge um, benefit to you in terms of your pain relief. Physiotherapy is key to try and maintain the strength and range of motion around this knee to stop it from deconditioning and having problems later on after the operation. Simple analgesia is key and nice to release guidelines in the last couple of years about what kind of painkillers should be taken. We're moving towards the painkillers such as cocodamol and anti-inflammatory such as naproxen or ibuprofen which help with pain relief to try and dampen down the pain within the knee. Strapping of the knee with braces or even corrective braces, which correct the alignment can be used. And this helps offload the knee or unload the knee. Um, and they can be prescribed by your doctor to, to try and aid with some of this pain relief and get you doing the physiotherapy and, and activities as normal. And finally, we move on to injections, which again are encouraged by NICE guidelines. Steroid injections are the, the main ones indicated for arthritis according to NICE guidelines. And these are injections into the knee, which take away the inflammation of the knee and the pain so that you can get using this knee and trying to build up uh, the knee with physiotherapy and help with the weight loss. There are other injections available. And here at the Benison, we offer Duralane, which is a hyaluronic acid injection. It's a high molecular weight injection, which acts acts as a shock absorber in the knee and lubricates the knee joint so that your knee arthritic your knee arthritis is slightly more bearable and it dampens down the effect of the inflammatory process that arthritis causes there are surgical treatments for arthritis that are not just replacement surgery we can correct the alignment as we discussed earlier knee arthritis causes your knee to change shape and as a result you start putting more weight through that damaged compartment this causes your knee to become either bow-legged or knock-kneed. And actually in surgery, we can correct this with a, a procedure where we actually break your bone and correct the alignment to make it either straight or slightly on the opposite way to where it was going in the first place, so that you can offload this damaged compartment and help with your knee pain. There are arthroscopic techniques where if you have catching symptoms within your knee because of loose flaps of cartilage, we can just shave these off. Microfracture can um, give a little bit of relief, but actually is probably going more out of favor now in terms of the treatment of cartilage disorders within the knee. And because it affects your issue with cartilage transplantation later, which can be referred on to other centers, which are cartilage specialist centers, and our local one is Stanmore, where you can have transplantation of bone and cartilage into defects if they're small enough. And lastly, you can have knee replacement surgery, which is what we're going to focus on today in terms of the management options. Knee replacement surgery is a, is a very common operation that occurs within the UK and about 100,000 are occurring every year in the UK at the moment. 
The average age is somewhere around 68 or 70, and the majority of patients who have it are just, in, are just female. Females have the majority of the procedures at 56%. Patients do really well after a knee replacement, and they do have a health improvement in 94.5% of patients. And research seems to suggest that 80% of knee replacements can last for 25 years. However, this does depend on the use that it has, the age that it goes in, and other issues which can affect the wear and tear of the knee replacement itself. So the question is, do you need a knee replacement? Well, knee replacement surgery is indicated for patients who have bone on bone arthritis in their knee. Once you have bone on bone arthritis of your knee, it all then depends on the symptoms you're getting. Do you have this, do, does it affect your quality of life? And if it does, and you have osteoarthritis, the bone on bone arthritis, or rheumatoid arthritis is another condition, or if you've had significant trauma to the knee causing severe fractures and exposing underlying bone, or severe ligament injuries leading to ongoing instability, then you are su certainly suitable for consideration of a knee replacement. And what are the aims of this knee replacement for you? Well, the main aim is to improve the pain within the knee so that you can then increase the mobility and you can start getting back to normal day-to-day -day function. You can start walking around without ongoing pain and you can sleep better and you don't have rest pain. This helps restore function. And also in certain circumstances, we do realign the leg mechanical axis, but actually this is surgeon dependent and patient dependent. And sometimes we will still maintain some malalignment in the knee as we feel that this is maybe your better you this is your natural alignment and this is what we try and restore in younger patients who have slightly higher demand to for work and sports we try and get them back to those as well and i certainly don't tell patients that they can't do anything after a knee replacement as long as they're willing to take risks that the more you do the higher impact stuff you do the more likely this is to wear out or if you had a big injury you could fracture around the implant So there are different types of knee replacement. Certain patients with certain types of arthritis are suitable for a half knee replacement, as you can see here on the left side of the screen. A half knee replacement can either replace the medial side, which is the inside of your knee, the outside of your knee, the lateral compartment, or the patellofemoral joint um, as an individual unicompartmental knee replacement. And again, this is specific to the type of arthritis and the patients that present with those, that con those conditions. A standard knee replacement is, is the one that you see on the, on the right. And this is the more common one. This is for those patients who have another arthritis throughout their knee and wouldn't do well with a half knee replacement. We can use standard instrumentation, which is the most common type of uh, procedure performed. And this is where we put instruments around the knee to try and get the alignment. We make our cuts around the knee according to your normal anatomy, and we put the knee replacement in. Computer navigation is becoming more topical. It's, it's research is being done to show computer navigation and potentially robots in the future are the way forward in terms of how a knee replacement is performed. Certainly in Australia, the computer navigation outcomes, the patients who have computer navigated surgery at 10 years have probably got better reported outcomes in terms of their, their PROMS, which is the, the patient outcome scoring system in, in all age groups. And this may convert into the outcomes following robotic surgery, but certainly the long-term outcomes aren't there yet. Some patients though do require constrained total knee replacement. And these are for those patients who have, the, who require revision surgery. If they've got severe deformities that lead to ligament laxity or failure, and these patients need a little, a little bit more constraint from their knee replacement so that it can function without dislocation or giving way. The knee replacement we use here in Benetton is called the Vanguard knee replacement. It's a, a product produced by a company called Zimmer Biomet. And looking at the current ODEP rating, which is the national guide uh, ratings for how implants survive, it's the highest implant we've got is 15A out of the Vanguard system. The 10 year survivorship is very good, and this is 96.4% that at 10 years should survive, meaning that only 3.6% will have been revised at 10 years. 
it's a cemented implant, which means that we put we secure it into the bone with cement, which acts as a bit like a grout within the knee itself. And we sometimes do the patella and we sometimes don't. And again, the research doesn't seem to suggest which one we should be doing. And it all depends on the patient's symptoms and the findings are interoperative at, at, the, at surgery. And sometimes a surgeon has a preference about which one they prefer. So what happens during your knee replacement surgery? Well, apart from obviously your, you have the anaesthetic and this can be as a general anaesthetic, spinal anaesthetic, or even a block, which blocks the nerves around the knee to make the knee numb. And this is all in conversation with your anaesthetist. Once you're in surgery, we take your disease joint and we, we put on jigs onto the bottom of your bones to make our cuts so that we can basically saw off the arthritic area of your knee. And then on top of these saw, so, sawn off areas, we put in our knee replacement components, our femoral components and our tibial components. And, put, and there's a plastic spacer in between which allows that knee to move freely. And then occasionally we put a plastic button on the underneath the kneecap as well. And these are all secured in place to the femur, to the tibia and to the patella with cement. Most patients, in my experience here, stay in only one to two nights. Those who do really well will probably go home the next day, but majority of patients here are probably staying two days. Occasionally, patients will stay in three days if there's problems getting home, pain isn't controlled, or they're taking a little bit more time to get up and about with physios. You'll, be, you'll wake up with a large protective dressing on your knee with a waterproof dressing on underneath. The big woolen crepe bandage usually comes off at day one or day two, leaving this uh, waterproof dressing on underneath, which needs to remain on for a couple of weeks to let the wound heal. Your pain will be controlled by the doctors on the ward who will, take to, who will manage your painkillers and make sure they're liaising with you and the nursing staff to make sure pain is under control. And the physiotherapy team will get to see you hopefully on the first day as soon as you wake up to try and get you up and about and around the ward so that we can get you as independently mobile as possible as quickly as possible. And we've got very skilled nurses here at the Benedon who will look after you and who understand your recovery process after a knee replacement. Once you go home, well, we, we, only send, we only discharge you from the hospital when we feel it's safe to do so. And this is in conjunction with the physiotherapy input as well as the nursing input. You'll go home with frames or crutches, depending on what's safest for you and what the physios feel is going to keep you safe at home. And you'll be shown how to go up and down stairs. After about a week, you'll most likely be able to just walk independently with just the sticks you've been given. And these gradually wean off over the next six weeks. First couple of weeks after knee replacement is a very painful operation. You will be on painkillers, but we do want you to take those painkillers and not be too proud and, and because it is a very painful operation. You will have bruising around the knee, which is very common. And some of us use, some people use staples to close a wound, which you'll be able to feel or, or see, even see underneath the dressing. You should in these first two weeks be doing your exercises that the physio has given you to try and get this knee moving as quickly as possible, to try and prevent long-term stiffness and to try and improve this muscle musculature around the knee as quickly as possible. By about six weeks, you should be now walking at home and briefly outside, and you probably have weaned off the, the sticks or the frame that you've been using. You may even be able to drive a short distance depending on the knee that's been replaced and the pain and how you've recovered. And at, th at six weeks, this is when you'll see the surgeon that's done your operation so they can make sure that you're getting on okay, that your range of motion is improving and your pain is getting better. By three months, these are when patients start feeling the benefits of the surgery. They can see the light at the end of the tunnel, the pain is getting better, the mobility is improving, and they're starting to return to normal activities, getting back to work for those patients who work, and they're starting to do their normal exercises. There are risks to any surgical procedure. There's risks can occur in three to, at three time periods during the knee replacement, either during the surgery, during the recovery period of the surgery, or even late on. During surgery, you may lose some blood, we make a big cut in the knee and this can bleed. 
And so sometimes you need a blood transfusion either during the surgery or in the recovery period afterwards whilst you're an inpatient. Because we're cutting soft bone and putting hard metal implants into a slightly softer bone, there can be a fracture to the bone or bone injury. There are nerves and blood vessels, ligaments and tendons surrounding the knee, and these can also be damaged with a saw blade at the time of surgery. During recovery period, you can have problems with the wound. These, can, these wounds can break down and become infected and you can get an early infection in the, in the knee. Blood clots can occur in your calf, which can go up to your lungs. And that can be a significant problem in terms of, it can cause significant breathing difficulties. And in the worst case scenario, it can lead to death. To prevent this, we do give medications to thin your blood to try and prevent this. But obviously we, we do this in conjunction with you to find out your risks of the blood clots before the operation. You will in the first few weeks walk the limp and this does gradually get better as, as your pain improves, stiffness improves and your strength improves. And you will have stiffness and swelling in those early few weeks, which does hopefully get better and progresses up to about the 12 to 18 month stage, the stiffness, the range of motion gradually improves. Later on after a knee replacement, you can get a late infection, which again would require further surgery. Over time, implants can, fa can fail, they wear out and they get what's called aseptic loosening, where the plastic within the knee causes a, an immune response in your body, which causes the bone to break down and wear out and cause loosening of the implant requiring revision surgery. It can also fracture around the implant at a later stage, either requiring a fixation with metal, with plates and screws, or even revision surgery where we replace the knee replacement. And it can dislocate. So knee replacements that have mobile bearings or, or the ligaments become loose, the whole knee can dislocate and require revision surgery later on. So how do you decide who or when to have the operation? Well, we all have NJR profiles. So the NJR is our national joint registry. And this is where all of our data regarding our joint replacements are kept. It shows the numbers of joint replacements we, we do a year. It shows where we're doing them, what age group of patients we're doing them on, how high risk these patients are, and our, early, our one year mortality rate, it shows. So you can first of all pick your surgeon by going onto our profiles on the NJR and finding out which surgeon you want to do it. You can go onto the private healthcare independent network, which has a, a database of all of the, the, the surgeons doing the procedures and the outcomes, and also around, and the outcomes from the Benedin. And you can go on other review sites such as Doctify, which will allow you to review doctor and, and hospital profiles to see, see what their outcomes are and how other patients have got on with those surgeons. So it now comes to the end of the presentation and leaves time for some questions that you may have, and I'll try and hopefully answer as many as I can, but I'll hand you back to Phil who will try and coordinate that. So thank you very much for listening and. and I'll speak to you with some of your answers or questions. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Jones. And uh, thank you for some uh, excellent insight into the um, various conditions and treatment options available. So we will now take some questions from our attendees. So this attendee asks, why do my knees hurt when I'm lying in bed resting? So the problem with knee arthritis is that the knee has, is you have bone on bone arthritis, which basically means that the underlying bone is not protected by cartilage anymore. Now the bone has nerve endings and nerve fibers, and it also is a honeycomb structure, which can become bruised and, and you can bleed into this area. So if you do weight bearing tasks during the day and you've overloaded the knees during the day, then your knees are painful at night because you've done too much and that knee is bruised and it's painful and those nerve fibers just underneath the cartilage are, are causing that pain for you and that and that's that shows an end stage arthritis where patients get knee pain at night or at rest and it means that they're this this usually pretty bad and require a knee replacement at that stage or at least some intervention okay thank you uh this attendee asks uh, I'm in my early 60s and already had one of my knees replaced. I have pain in my other knee that hasn't got better from injections. 
meaning that I rely heavily on my new one standing still. Is this safe to do or should I seek to get surgery as soon as possible? I mean, it's safe. It's safe to do. The I think if you failed now steroid injections on, on your bad knee and your and you know the risks and the, the implications of having a knee replacement, which you obviously do having had the other one and it's done well for you, then I certainly would seek uh, advice fairly soon from a surgeon to have a discussion about whether, first of all, whether your arthritis is suitable for a knee replacement. And if it is, then, you know, have a discussion about that knee replacement option. But it certainly is safe to stand on that leg and, and take pressure for it. The knees, knee replacement can take quite a lot, but obviously the more you wear it out over the years, the higher the chance of revision surgery later on. OK, thanks. Uh, this person says, I'm having a full knee replacement on July the 29th. I know that this will give me a stronger, good as new knee. But could I ask, are there things I used to be able to do, such as kick a ball, run, kneel down, that I will not now not be able to do in the future once I've recovered? Yeah, it's a very good question. So I always explain to patients, I don't ever say you can't do something with your knee replacement. The point of doing the knee replacement, from my point of view, is that you get back to things that you want to do. There are things though with a knee replacement you find harder to do. So certainly people find it hard to kneel down. You've got a large scar on the front of your knee and some people don't like kneeling on that scar because it is a bit painful and irritable. And so they may not want, you may not want to kneel on it after the operation. Kicking a ball, there's no reason if you find you're able to and you've got the range of motion to do it and the strength in your, in your quadriceps and, and, it, and you've got, then you should be able to. You know, people go skiing with knee replacements, they jump out of planes and they do get back to activities. It's just, it's whether you can with your knee replacement and how, the, how you recover in terms of stiffness and strength. But it's certainly nothing in what, that I would say you should avoid doing if you want to do it. Okay, sounds very reassuring. Um, this person says, what is the max, maximum range of motion post-op? Yeah, that's a very good question as well. So knee replacements are mechanical devices. And actually, we're not going to give you the range of motion you once had as a, as a child, because if we do that, the, the knee replacement can actually dislocate and it can impinge and, and cause more wear and tear. So majority of the time, it depends on your preoperative range of motion as well. If you have a really stiff knee preoperatively, then there is a higher chance of having stiffness after the operation in a reduced range of motion. We'd always ex hopefully get you more range of motion than you currently have, but because of the soft scarring to the soft tissues, it can mean that you still have a fairly a stiff knee. We'd hope to improve that by 10, 15 degrees in both extension and flexion, but if it's really stiff, then sometimes that can be a problem. In the ideal world, we'd get most knees fully straight and to about 120 maybe 125 degrees, if we could. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is an interesting one from an attendee called Claire, who asks, how long after the operation would I be able to manage a flight to Australia? Uh, okay, Claire, so what we suggest after a big operation like a knee replacement, which puts you at higher chance of blood clots, is that you don't do long haul flights for the research suggests six weeks, uh, you still have a higher chance of blood clots compared to the average population who would be flying to Australia. But also that, that risk doesn't really go down to, to the same risk until about three months. Also, the fact that sitting down for long periods of time with your knee bent and, and doing the mobilisation around airports, I think if you looked at around the three month stage, I think that would probably be around the earliest that I would suggest a really long haul flight to Australia. OK, thank you. Um, this attendee says, I have quite bowed legs. Will this cause an issue? No, so we're very used to having bowed legs when it comes to doing knee replacements because it's the general disease of arthritis. It's the most common deformity we, we, we address. Majority of surgeons will make you make your legs straight again, which actually will give you a little bit of a leg length discrepancy if we do one at a time because we straighten the leg and it's a bit longer. 
Um, when I do knee replacements, I, I probably leave you in a little bit of bowed leg because I think that's probably your natural anatomy, but I would, certainly wouldn't do it to the same level as you're in at the moment. If it's really bowed, I'll just give you a slight bowing of your knee so that you get back to your normal anatomy that you had before your arthritis progressed. But it doesn't cause a problem in the knee replacement there. Okay, thank you. Uh, this attendee says, I have a missing ligament following a serious sports injury nearly 60 years ago. Would this be an issue for knee replacement? So it depends on the knee ligament. If it's the ACL within the knee, then no, because actually in most, apart from half knee replacements, we chop out the ACL as part of the operation. If it's the PCL, which is the one at the back in the knee, then it wouldn't affect your knee replacement. It would just need to be known to the surgeon because it would change the implant type. It would need a little bit more constraint, but it wouldn't affect your outcome in terms of surgery. If it's one of the ligaments on the outside of your knee and it's unstable still, then it, would, it wouldn't affect your, your knee replacement in terms of having the operation, but it certainly would affect the implant you have. Because if it's a ligament on the outside of your knee, we'd need a, a more highly constrained implant, which is called a hinged knee implant, so that we could keep, keep the stability back in that knee. So it all depends on the type of ligament that's been injured and, and the findings that the surgeon found on the examination in clinic. Okay, thank you. Um, this lady asks, can I have a corticosteroid injection pre TKR? Yes. So it's a very common thing that we see patients in clinic who need uh, some immediate relief from their knee pain or who aren't ready for knee replacement. So we give corticosteroid injections at the time in clinic. The only caveat to that is that if we give you a steroid injection, we would not do the knee replacement for three months. And that's because of this higher risk of infection following the steroid injection in that three month period. But the research shows that after three months, that risk decreases back to normal. Thanks. Um, next question is, does having osteopenia affect outcomes and timing? Not really, no. So we in a lot of our age group population, there's a lot of osteopenia. And because actually the knee is painful, you get a lot of disuse osteopenia because of you're not using it as much as you did. Now, we know about this and, and the implants are fairly good and we put them in uh, with cement. So they should, they'll be stable. There is obviously a higher risk of fracture around an implant if you've got weaker bone. But hopefully once you put the implant in and you start mobilizing more, this will hopefully strengthen the bone a bit and it will remodel as bone does. So if you're using it more and you're putting more weight on it because it's pain free, then this is actually protected. Okay, thank you. Um, next attendee asks, at what stage in the degenerative process is it best to operate? How do you know when the time is right? So from a surgical point of view, the, the knee replacement has to be done in someone who has really bone on bone arthritis on weight bearing x-rays. If you've got bone on bone arthritis, then you, then the only surgical option really then is, is an arthroplasty or maybe a, a tib an osteotomy. Um, if you have got mod mild or moderate arthritis in that degenerative process and the weight bearing x-rays that the surgeon gets for you does not show that there's bone on bone arthritis, then it's you're probably not suitable at that time for a knee replace or knee arthroplasty. And there may be other options available, which again could be discussed with your surgeon depending on the, the disease and the disease progression and your symptoms. Okay, thank you. Um, this guest asks, you spoke of the various risks post-surgically. What percentages do these have? So they're, they're all fairly minor. So if the consent form, when you go through it with the, the surgeon, the risk of blood clots is, is probably around 5% sort of symptomatic blood clots. Infection, again, is around a similar, similar risk. We know that knee replacements wear out and the risk of it wearing out is again 
it depends on many factors. But if we look at, again, the NJR is a good place to look at for this. You can look for um, revision rates in certain knee replacements. So you could, and, and it will also give you a breakdown for revision surgery in certain age groups and certain genders. And so you can actually break it down into almost percentages for particular people. Um, but they're, they're all fairly minor issues. And again, it's about having that discussion with your, your surgeon because there are factors which increase your risk of complications. So patients with diabetes or with previous skin complications, previous blood clots would all have a slightly different risk compared to the, the, the average. And so when you see your surgeon and, and they go through the risk factors with you, it'll be worth speaking to them if you've had other problems or other previous blood clots because they will then be able to highlight the higher risk of blood clots in you and and the protection that we can have okay thank you uh this attendee russell asks do you have to have one knee operated on at a time so there is so there are surgeons who will do bilateral knee replacement um it's I mean, I don't see it. I haven't seen it in this country personally, but it does happen. And there are surgeons who will do it. The risks, the reason why it's not done very often is because it's a very debilitating operation anyway. It's painful. And actually you find it difficult to mobilize even having one leg done, let alone two. On top of that, the risks of having bilateral knee replacement do increase. So your risk of infections, risk of blood clots all go up and go up to a point where you feel that the risks are maybe unacceptable. Along these lines, if you have one knee replacement, then actually not doing then a knee replacement for another three to six months reduces those risks. And so you then get back to normal level of risk following about six months after the first knee replacement. So yes, you could have a bilateral knee replacement and in certain circumstances it is done but they're usually done in patients who are have no other medical problems, are maybe slightly younger, so can deal with the physiological hit that you'll get from having big surgery and willing to accept it, willing to accept the higher risks. Thanks. But we um, don't do it at the Benedon, sorry. This next question is, is the hyaluronic acid injection suitable for someone with end-stage osteoarthritis? Technically, yes. I, I think if in my personal experience, it is probably better in those patients who have mild to moderate arthritis, because I do think that those patients who have significant bone on bone arthritis, it, it's got a limited part to play. But again, it's about the discussion with patients in clinic. If patient, if you really insistent you don't want an operation you want to try something else to try and manage your pain then i think it does have a role and it certainly would you know i would be, it'd be worth trying if if you didn't want to go down the surgical route and you wanted an option of, a, of an injection and high and durolane is probably out of the the hyaluronic acid formulas is probably has the best outcomes in terms of the, the research okay um Next question is, if one is experiencing slight pain and has bone on bone arthritis, does it make sense to opt for early surgery to get it over with whilst you are younger and presumably fitter? I, yeah, so I don't think it is actually. I think knee replacements are for those patients with bone on bone arthritis with significant symptoms of pain and, and in issues of mobility. The problem with a knee replacement is it is a very painful operation. So if you're substituting mild pain for then severe pain post-operatively, you, you don't then do as well because you, you're in a low, you're in a lot more pain and you'll rate, you'll, you'll not use that knee, you'll get stiff. And then the outcomes of having a stiff knee are very, uh, uh, can be quite poor. So I would say that patients who have a knee replacement should have the bone on bone x-ray changes and significant symptoms to justify to having a knee replacement personally. Okay, thank you. Um, this guest asks, if I have a partial knee replacement, is it possible to later have a full replacement if needed? Mm. And how many times can this be done in one knee? Okay, yes. So 
the problem with unicompartmental knee replacements are that you only replace part of the knee. And that means that the rest of the knee can develop arthritis just like your other part, as the knee that's been part of the knee that's been replaced has. And if that happens, then you, you get this progression of arthritis, which then needs revision surgery. And it can be done in a couple of ways. The majority of these half knee replacements, which form progressive arthritis, will then be converted to a full total knee replacement. However, certain surgeons with certain arthritic pictures may replace another compartment as a unicompartmental knee replacement and actually replace. So then you've got two unicompartmental knee replacements within the knee, depending on the disease that you've got. And again, that's discussion with your revision surgeon at the time. But it, the risk of having further surgery after a unicompartmental knee replacement is about 14 percent at 10 years. And so those patients tend to progress their arthritis and require further surgery of some kind. Okay, thank you. Um, this person asks, what is the difference between a standard knee replacement and a signature replacement? So signature knee replacement is a custom made implant and it's not the the whole implant is not custom made but the cutting jigs are, cust are custom made for the patient there was certainly a vogue a few years ago where it was deemed that this was maybe a better option for patients because you were getting a ct scan of their lower leg and you were getting the cutting jigs to be made for that patient and there was certainly a high number put in particularly around the region and i think the reason why they're not used as much anymore is because I don't think in terms of the outcomes, they justify all the extra imaging and the cost compared to a normal standard instrumentation of a knee replacement in that it didn't show much benefit. And so that's why it's not used in standard knee arthritis. It can still be used in deformity. So those patients who've had previous fractures of their tibia or their femur can still have a signature knee implant as it means that our normal instrumentation is not able to be done. And so we need another technique, which can be via signature, or it can be by computer assisted uh, navigation or computer assisted surgery, including robotic surgery, um, which you know, can, can be done in, in places. And I think that's what's changed why signature is not as commonly used anymore. Thank you. Um, I think we may have touched on this a little. Uh, touched on this aspect in another question but this person asks how long do you have to wait between knee replacements so i tell patients that because it's a i want it takes about three months to get back on your feet and i think the risks of blood clots infection and, and it does increase it's still increased up to about the three month stage i tend to suggest that they i if you come in about both your knees then i see you at the six week stage if at that point you've, you're, you can see the light and you think, actually, my knee replacement, I'm glad I had it done, which is in you know, a lot of the patients, then I will then probably put you on the list at that point to be done at the six month stage. From my point of view, I think it means that you then have another six weeks to get to that three month stage where hopefully you're doing well. And it also then gives you three months to then rehab both your legs so that you're in conditioned as possible in the best possible way for your next knee replacement at the six month stage. Okay, thank you. Uh, this person asks, I've been advised that having too many steroid injections can be a problem if I then need to go down the surgery route. How many would be too many? Uh, it's a difficult question. I think it depends on your circumstances. I certainly don't think we should be giving more than two steroid injections a year. The risk, the problem with steroid injection is the first one is always the best one. And so every injection you give after your first injection has a diminishing effect. And so they work for less time. So they work for less time, plus you've still got the risks of infection from giving the, the injection. And also steroid injections can damage cartilage. It causes what we call chondrolysis, which is actually the cartilage cells die. And so you, if you had remaining cartilage in that knee and you give years and years worth of steroid injection, you will eventually lead to further arthritis. However, as long as there's no infection from the steroid injection, there's no real limit on it. If it still benefits you 
and the risks and the benefits still outweigh the risks and you and you still decide you don't want an operation then i would still go ahead because it won't affect the operation down the line unless there's a, a, an infection from the steroid injection which then would complicate your knee replacement but that would could happen after the first one or after the hundredth one okay thanks very much um on a similar topic uh this person asks I have suffered acute pain for over three months in my left knee and x-rays show acute osteoarthritis and I'm waiting assessment for surgery. Mm -hmm. Is it worth trying injections in the meantime to see if this helps and maybe delay surgery? Depends what it means by acute arthritis. So there can be conditions where you get an acute collapse around the knee. Which, uh, and that's because of what we call avascular necrosis of the bone. And, and what happens is you suddenly get collapse of the bone leading to damage to cartilage. And in that situation, I don't think a steroid injection is justified because actually you want your bone to heal and harden. And so I think you need to see it. If you, I don't quite know what the diagnosis of acute arthritis is, but I certainly would be slightly worried by the term. And I'd, I'd want a surgeon to see you first about that before considering an injection, if it's being called acute on a radiological X-ray, on a, a report. Okay. Um, thank you. This guest asks, are there any benefits in taking colonol to rebuild cartilage? Um, I think there, it certainly isn't a nice recommendation and, and nice obviously is our governing body that looks at all the research to look at uh, cost effectiveness of treatments that we use in the in the nhs and i think from my point of view it probably hasn't got a cost benefit however i would always say that you know sometimes things work and things work for many reasons for placebo reasons for a small chance that it may work and I think if you get benefit from it there's always I you know I, I don't see a problem it's certainly not going to harm you probably um, and it's just it's I don't think it's necessarily got the research to back it up but I think if it works for you then it's not going to do any harm okay thanks um, next question is I had a heart attack 14 years ago and a stent fitted does this increase the risk factor it does so your anesthesia your, your risk after the operation or during the operation would be slightly higher obviously with a stent you would want to be seen by the anesthetic team preoperatively to have a full pre-op assessment to make sure your heart tracing was normal and make sure everything you know was optimized as possible preoperatively it certainly wouldn't deter us from an operation if we went through the risks and benefits with you and you and we had a kind of agreement that this was the best out best best treatment for you but it, we would obviously it would put you at slightly higher risk of an adverse event it would still wouldn't be a high risk but it would it would be more than the general public with normal heart function okay thank you um next question is my knee is grinding is this something i should be worried about i'm only 60. yeah knee, knees grind and click and clunk all, all the time and it's whether they're painful when they do it a grinding painful knee is different to a normal a, a, a non-painful grinding knee and i think if you have a painful knee that grinds then yes you probably should see someone because that grinding could be the start or the even the end of the arthritic picture which is then grinding causing pain and then we can start treating that and, and giving you a diagnosis so I, I if it's causing pain the grinding i would see someone if it's if it's causing discomfort and and, and affects your quality of life okay thanks um this person asks what is the usual time frame from consultation to knee replacement so on the Benedin, if you if you're a, a Benedin member and you're coming down that route, I think it's it depends on the surgeon's waiting list. And obviously, every surgeon has a slightly different waiting list in terms of how long you're going to wait for that. But it's I, th I don't think it's any more than three months. I, I don't know the, the actual numbers, actually. I don't know if Phil has any numbers, but 
we can always get back to you. Not offhand, but, but we can the waiting list coordinators here would know, and we can always let you know what that weight would be. Um, but it's certainly, again, it depends on the surgeon you've seen and what their waiting list is on when you get done. But I, I don't think it's much more than three months. Okay. This this person's given their name, so we can can get back in touch with them with that information. Okay. Um, this person asks, how soon after surgery could I have hydrotherapy? So as long as the wound is healed, I don't really have any problem with that kind of management. So the wound takes two weeks to heal. At the two week stage, you then see your practice nurse and they check that the wound is healed. They remove any stitches or clips that need removing. And then it probably needs about two more weeks just to let everything mature a little bit more before you sit in a, a pool. But I think around the four to six week stage, I, I wouldn't have any issues with you getting in a pool as long as your wound had healed, it covered over, there was no scabs and there was no signs that it could get infected by going to a public hydrotherapy pool. Okay, thank you. Um, this person asks, I had my first steroid injection on the 28th of June, just a few days ago. And I rested two days as advised. I thought all was positive, but disappointed that each day the old pain seems to be creeping back. What do you advise? Uh, so if you did see initial benefit, obviously most steroid injections get given with a local anaesthetic. So for the first six to eight hours, you will see some benefit that then wears off and then the steroid does take about 48 to 72 hours to to start kicking in but can take up to about a week before it, it starts working and i certainly have seen patients who come back and actually say it took me about two weeks before it all started working so i wouldn't lose too much hope but obviously if it doesn't have any benefit and actually the pain just starts getting worse and worse then i would contact the secretary and see if you can get seen sooner because obviously it's a management option that hasn't worked for you but I'd give it a little bit more time uh, and just see how you go. Okay. Um, I think we have exhausted all the questions. Um, so uh, if you'd like to discuss or book your consultation, uh, our private patients team is here until 8.30 this evening or you can call them between 8 and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. We're actually offering a discount for joining this session for seven days, and um, the terms are listed on the screen. And you will receive a short survey after this session, and obviously we'd be very grateful if you could let us have your feedback on the webinar. Uh, our next webinar will be this time next week, and it will be covering hip replacement surgery. So we'd love you to join us for that, and you can sign up to that on our website. All that remains for me to say at this point, on behalf of Mr. Mark Jones and the whole team here at Benenden Hospital, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us this evening, and we hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.